Hi guys, it's Quinn's Ideas here. If you appreciate my content, consider clicking the like button so that the YouTube algorithm sees and circulates my content. Thank you guys so much. Cosmic horror is a concept that has exploded in popularity in recent times. But of course, this is a type of horror that great authors have been utilizing for many decades. More than anyone else, H.P. Lovecraft is associated with this concept. He is, in fact, as many of you already know, considered to be the father of cosmic horror, which is often referred to as Lovecraftian horror. Many authors since Lovecraft's death have written stories within his universe, continuing the tradition of cosmic horror. Others, like Stephen King, have adapted these concepts in their own works. In this video, however, we will be looking at cosmic horror from one specific angle. We will be discussing the usage of cosmic horror in science fiction specifically. I would argue that many of Lovecraft's works are actually science fiction to begin with, as many of them have ideas traditionally associated with the science fiction genre. Beings from outer space, strange technology, machines capable of flying through space. For example, the story Through the Gates of the Silver Key, which Lovecraft co-wrote with Edgar Hoffman Price, has several elements of science fiction. The story centered around the character Randolph Carter, who also showed up in other Lovecraft stories. After being trapped on the planet Yadith, Carter eventually finds a way to use the technology of the aliens who had trapped him there to escape. Slowly, Carter's plans went forward. He provided a light wave envelope of abnormal toughness, able to stand both the prodigious time transition and the unexampled flight through space. He tested all his calculations and set forth his earthward dreams again and again, bringing them as close as possible to 1928. He practiced suspended animation with marvelous success. The short story, At the Mountains of Madness, which Lovecraft wrote in 1931, is also an example of a story with science fiction elements. I've covered this story in its entirety in this video here. The story is essentially about a group of scientists who make an expedition to Antarctica, only to end up discovering a terrible secret about humanity's past. In typical Lovecraft fashion, many of them meet a terrible fate. Without spoiling too much, the story involves the discovery of alien life forms and an impossibly ancient city that predates all human civilization. This is one of my favorite ideas that pops up in Lovecraftian horror. Inexplicably ancient structures of unknown origin. This is certainly an idea that other authors since Lovecraft have adopted. One of them is Dan Simmons, author of the Hyperion Cantos. Since we have been discussing the Hyperion books recently on this channel, it seems right to explore the ways in which author Dan Simmons uses cosmic horror. The galactic civilization which exists in this series has explored thousands of worlds, and on nine of them exists something strange beyond all explanation. These nine worlds, which I have also discussed in a video here, are similar to each other in various ways, the main two being that they are all Earth-like, and the other being that beneath the surface of each world is an enormous system of labyrinths dating back hundreds of thousands of years, perhaps before humankind even existed in its current evolutionary form. Nothing exists to explain their construction. No leftover technology or tools, no culture. The civilization who had built them, known only as the Builders, had vanished without a single trace other than the labyrinths. George R. R. Martin borrowed countless Lovecraft names and themes for his A Song of Ice and Fire book series. He also writes about an ancient race of people known as the Maze Makers. Like the builders from Hyperion, they constructed vast labyrinths. They made from giant blocks of stone. The purpose of the mazes, like in Hyperion, is unknown. According to the legend, the Maze Makers had been destroyed by a people from the sea. This seems like a reference to the Deep Ones of Lovecraft's own lore, especially considering that they are mentioned several times in the fourth book in the A Song of Ice and Fire series, A Feast for Crows. Now I know what you're saying, A Song of Ice and Fire is fantasy, not science fiction. I get it. But George R. R. Martin has written a lot of science fiction as well, and he's also gone on the record stating that in his opinion, there's not really a difference between science fiction or fantasy. And in fact, many of the ideas that show up in A Song of Ice and Fire also show up in science fiction stories that George R. R. Martin wrote decades ago. As I said, in Lovecraftian horror, strange ancient structures are a common concept. In general, human beings can fall into the trap of thinking that we mostly know how the world works. We understand history. We understand the way in which the universe works. Our histories tell us that civilization began at a specific time. By creating a structure more ancient than civilization, 
and placing it somewhere it was not meant to be, the author is creating a sense of mystery and dread. The Color Out of Space was published by H.P. Lovecraft in 1927. The story is narrated by a man from Boston. This character is never given a name. He is attempting to uncover the hidden truth surrounding a place known as Blasted Heath by the locals. The place was located near the hills west of the town known as Arkham. West of Arkham, the hills rise wild, and there are valleys with deep woods that no axe has ever cut. There are dark, narrow glens where the trees slope fantastically, and where thin brooklets trickle without ever having caught the glint of sunlight. In the story, during the summer of 1882, a meteorite crashed on the land of the Nahum family. The scientists which initially examined the meteorite found that it possessed strange characteristics. They had uncovered what seemed to be the side of a large colored globule embedded in the substance. The color, which resembled some bands of the meteor's strange spectrum, was almost impossible to describe and it was only by analogy that they called it a color at all. The life form which appeared as this color drained all the life from the surrounding area where it had crashed. Plants grew abnormally large but were foul tasting. The animals in the surrounding area became deformed, mutated, grotesque, and the people in the area, in typical Lovecraft fashion, were driven to madness. In this story, Lovecraft creates a being that is truly alien to us. It takes no humanoid form and has no exact desires or intent that we could discern. Speaking of A Color Out of Space, which was actually one of Lovecraft's personal favorites, it was adapted into a movie not too long ago, and some people really enjoyed it. I unfortunately did not. I don't think the movie was very good at representing the story or at representing the general concepts in which Lovecraft was trying to get across. And the movie itself I found to be pretty senseless. I would say that the film version of the book Annihilation is a much better story which adapts the ideas presented in Lovecraft's The Color Out of Space. Interestingly enough, when mentioning science fiction authors, people rarely ever talk about Lovecraft. I'm guilty of this as well. I did an entire video about the history of aliens in science fiction and didn't include any of his works. I think it's important to consider not only the impact that his work has had on the horror genre, but on the science fiction genre as well. Now I've made several videos about Lovecraft on this channel. You can check them all out by clicking the Lovecraft link in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace out.